we talk about the marquee matchup of the week? San Francisco 49ers. Uh, not Browns Rams? Dude, I'm going to get to Browns Rams. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. By the way, a little foreshadowing there. We're going to get to Browns Rams. <laughs> San Francisco at Philadelphia. Philadelphia plus two and a half. No, wait. No, wait. Three. That number is now three. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, where's Bet? Bet365 is still at two and a half, but okay. a lot of places are at three. So what a swing. Like when we were going on air on Sunday night before the Bills Eagles game had ended, this line was San Francisco plus two and a half. In the middle of the show, it went down to plus one. I tried to bet it at plus one, and the odds changed as I was making the bet to San Francisco minus one. Now it's two and a half. And that is, we've talked about this. We just taped a Green Dot Daily segment. That's wise guy money that's moving it. And like, it is crazy how much love there is for this Niners team. But they are really freaking good. Yeah. No, they're really good. And they're healthy. And that's probably the difference here. They're healthy. The Eagles aren't healthy. Um but at what point does this move too much? Ch- Ch- I just talked about this. This line has moved five and a half points now, like it's five crazy. and a half points. Yeah. So that's the only thing that's scaring me. Cause like uh, deep down, I, I'm, I'm getting hurts at home plus three. It's a no brainer pick. It's like getting Mahomes under the, under the three, right? It's like, even though it didn't work uh, the previous week against the Eagles, if a guy catches the ball, that's a nice bet on Mahomes. And the same thing goes here with hurts where it's like, it might not win this week, but if you've been betting Hurts at home, especially on the money line, he's only had one loss in two years at home. It's it's crazy, but that's just that that's facts. Like that's what the number is. So um it's the team that even if we're down 24 to 10 in the fourth quarter, you still feel like you have a chance of covering this number with this Eagles team. They just never give up, they never die. So um yeah, I'm I bet it. I've taken. I've already bet this again for a little amounts. If this ends up three, three and a half, man, that's gonna be hard for me to pass on. Especially where Lane Johnson could play. Like it just, he he basically has an injury where if he wakes up and his his lower body's locked up, that's why he sat out, right? If if he if he can't move right, he's not gonna play. Like he's committed to that. He says he doesn't want to risk hurting hurts because he's hurt. If he wakes up and he's feeling good and Lane Johnson can play, I guarantee you this number – it sounds crazy to say, but I guarantee you this number would drop just because he's that important to the Eagles and all the trends with him in the lineup and out of the lineup are a big deal. So, um, yeah, if you want to grab the value right now and grab the Eagles plus three, I, I'm on it with you, but the, the the pros know, man. Like, this is very telling that this has moved so much, um, especially in such a high-profile game that this will be. Um, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. It's moved this much. So again, I'm not going crazy on it. I need to talk to people, figure out who's betting this, what groups are betting this, why they're moving it, why they're so all in on this 49ers team. But I kind of, I feel like I kind of know where it's like, they're the healthier team. This is a spot they've had marked on their calendar for over a year. Like we, we saw how the Eagles played against the chiefs. Like the, you, you're pissed off when a team knocks you out from the previous year. That's just, these are growing men who remember that kind of stuff. It's got to be the same for the Chiefs. I mean, for the 49ers. Like, think of all the shit they talked the whole offseason. Man, if our co- if our QB didn't get hurt, like, you know, we we would have won that game. They got lucky. All, all of those things. Like, that's that's real. Like, those 49ers players really believe they're the better team. And this to them, I think Chad talked about it. It's like a proving spot of if they win this, what they have? The Ravens left, Chad, as one last tough game. Their last yeah. hard game. Their remaining schedule. Seahawks, Cardinals, Ravens in San Francisco, Commanders, Rams at home. Like this is a game that puts yeah. them in potential to contend for the number one seed and potentially gets Christian McCaffrey or Brock Purdy the MVP. So I mean, this is everything. Like this is this is as as close as you can get to a true playoff game here in December. So um yeah i can't wait we'll be at the bar watching with all the people and we will 
<laughs> if this if this gets the three three and a half contest how do we not have this one in there there's just such it's, a big line dude movement. it's so hard like this niners team seven homegrown all pros on their team these are guys they drafted developed became all pros right and and you and i are going to dive deeper into this tomorrow we'll do the youtube exclusive uh favorites film room we're going to talk about debo samuel and a little bit about trent williams and we talked about this on Sunday night. The difference in this Niners team between when those two guys were out before the bye and they lost three in a row and then they got healthy and they've been back since it, they are a dominant, dominant team. And I think this line would have opened at three given how the Eagles have played. If those guys had been healthy all season, right. It wouldn't have sort of moved in that direction. Um, but the Eagles are one of those teams and they are, you know, according to our luck rankings, one of the luckier teams this year. But I think that diminishes their mindset, their coaching staff and how they put themselves in positions to win. And they take advantage of the opportunity, right? Look at a bad team like the bears that had that forced four turnovers last night against the Vikings scored three points off the turnovers and like, and barely won the game. And a team like the Eagles that also gets lucky, but then takes advantage. That's, that's just understanding your position and playing championship football. So it's really hard not to bet on the Niners. I mean, on the Eagles as three point home underdogs. Yeah. It's just the classic case of the Eagles are so good people are looking for reasons to make them bad. Like the, the we, we already talked about, it. they're the best team ATS this year. So we have a team that went to the Super Bowl last year, lost, and somehow has the best ATS record on football. That does not happen, people. You go through the history, rarely does that happen. You need to be really mentally tough to have that kind of thing because not only do you have a target on your back, the book has a target on you. Like the, the, the books know the public yeah. is going to be heavy on this team. Every line is going to be inflated. Yes, and somehow, as lucky as they've been, they keep covering, and it's the Hurts factor. I mean, just take that overtime game. Nothing nothing against Josh Allen. He's incredible. He's played an incredible game, but in the biggest moment, him and Gabe Davis weren't on the same page. Gabe Davis went one way, wide open. Josh Allen threw the ball the other way. The ball lands in the end zone on the grass. Hurts gets the ball back. What's he do? He drives the field and scores a touchdown. Like, was he lucky or is that a guy that's a difference maker, a game changer? So that's the toughest part with Eagles where it's like, yeah, they're getting lucky. But like you just said, Chad, they're taking advantage of that luck and turning it into wins. So, um, it again, as a professional, this number scares the shit out of me because this is truly the classic case of the pros know and the public, they're idiots. They don't get it. Like the public, everyone's, I'm assuming, is going to be on this Eagles team, but – Early in the week here, all the money, all the bets for the most part right now are on the 49ers. So, again, it's early in the week, but it's definitely interesting. The the professionals have taken a major stand here, and we will be getting some sharp calls for sure on this game. Yeah, actually, I can't wait to hear them. I'm I'm so excited. We are going to be, as everyone knows, we're going to be doing the live show on Sunday, uh, Shepherd and the Knucklehead in New Jersey, but the doors open before the 4 p.m. games. They open around 3.45. Simon and I will be there. We'll definitely be sweating some afternoon games for the contest and otherwise, and this will be uh, this will not be the corner TV game. <laughs> this this um, game will be front and center. Here's an interesting stat from Evan that leans in favor of the Eagles. Teams that open as underdogs and close as favorites historically struggled to cover. 52-87 against the spread since 2019, 22-40 and 40 against the spread the last two seasons. So, and this number has moved. This isn't like plus one to minus one. This is a huge, huge swing. Interesting. Yeah. People, you got to get to the live show. This might be me and Chad's last live show because I'm going to be drinking during the Eagles game. I think the live show is, uh, the door's oh, open. God. I think it's a four or five hour experience, so... I, I'm not much of a drinker, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be drinking because I'm going to be nervous. I'm already nervous about this game. So, yeah, if you want to come watch me sweat an Eagles game, it doesn't get much better than this. Like, this is this is as tough as it gets as an Eagles fan this week. Oh, my God. I'm so excited we get to watch this with 
people in like a fun <laughs> environment.